Hello and welcome to my live broadcasting. God bless everyone who just joined in. Let me know if my sound is loud and clear. Give me one in the live chat, guys, if you can hear me loud and clear. Thank you for the confirmation, guys. Like I said, God bless everyone who just joined in. Welcome. God bless you in the name of our holy Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God bless your families. Thank you for your support. I want to also ask God to um, bless our admins who are doing an amazing job. Yesterday, we told you that one of our videos were shut down. YouTube playing the devil's advocate to protect Islam, the fake religion of Muhammad, the man-made religion of Muhammad from us. So even Muslims, they even need the help of YouTube to protect their fake religion that they cannot defend, right? So <clears throat> today we wanted to go live again. So please, if you didn't do it yet, share the link of today's live show, guys, with your friends. And if you can, also on social media so people get notified. Now, on today's live broadcast, guys, we will have the opportunity to learn how the Prophet of Islam died, how did he die, and who actually killed him. Because we know that Muhammad was killed, right? He didn't die a natural death. He was actually killed. Now, Sunni Muslims say a Jewish woman poisoned him. But the Shia say, the Shia Muslims say that it was actually Hafza and Aisha by the command of Abu Bakr poisoning Muhammad. Putting poison instead of medicine to kill Muhammad so that Abu Bakr can get the power to inherit the power of Muhammad. So, you know, Muslims have to differ who actually killed Muhammad, right? So they have to differ. So before we start, guys, before we start to understand and learn about the death of the Prophet of Islam, let me go back to yesterday's teaching because before we start, I want to always try to have a nice introduction what happened yesterday. We talked about the <clears throat> shirk that is inside the Quran. And we showed you yesterday that if you go to chapter 9, Surat at tawbah other nickname is Surat al Saif, the chapter of the sword. You don't need to guess why this chapter is called the chapter of the sword, right? So according to this ayah, guys, according to this ayah, Christians have taken their lords beside Allah. Well, this is a really bad translation. But the Arabic says, اتخذوا أحبارهم their rabbis وروحبانهم their monks أرباباً lords as lords من دوني Instead of Allah, Allahi wa al Masih. Instead of Allah and the Messiah. So, who are the Lords in this case? Allah and the Messiah, Jesus. So, he's trying to attack the Christians, which is not, of course false. We don't worship our rabbis and monks as Lords. That's false. Besides Jesus, that's false. So he lied, but he also made poo-poo. He completely exposed himself, Muhammad. 
when he created this ayah, when he fabricated this ayah in the Quran. So he is attacking the Christians, but at the same time, he is busting himself, exposing himself, calling Allah and the Messiah lords, right? Min dunillahi wa al-Masih, instead of Allah and the Messiah, who are the lords according to the Quran. Lord of mercy. And we also showed you from chapter 48, chapter 48, ayah 9, that Muslims have to glorify Muhammad, right? You have to glorify Muhammad. And we told you about the grammar rules in Arabic because it says, لِتُؤْمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَالرَّسُولِهِ And here's the problem with the grammar rules, guys. It says Allah and his messenger but according to grammar rules in the arabic every language has its grammar rules right the last person is muhammad the messenger wa rasulihi then it says wa tu'azziruhu wa tuwaqqiruhu wa tusabbihuhu wa tusabbihuhu that means glorify him glorify who the messenger so muslims have to glorify muhammad him muhammad at early dawn and the close of day, every day. Did you catch it? So we showed you from two different ayahs, the shirk, the blasphemy that Muhammad created inside the Quran. So that's what we discussed yesterday. So today we will talk about the death of Muhammad, the death of the fake prophet of Islam. Right? Who killed Muhammad? Like I said, the Shia say, Aisha and Hafza, by the command of Abu Bakr, to take full control to get rid of Muhammad so that Abu Bakr can be the next successor. That's what Shia say. And Sunni say, no, no, a Jewish lady poisoned Muhammad. Right? A Jewish lady poisoned Muhammad. And till today, guys, till today, in many countries, for example, Palestine, even in Indonesia and other Muslim countries, they go on the street and they say, Khaybar Khaybar Ya Yahud, Jeshu Muhammad Sawfa Ya'ud. That means they are reminding the Israelites, the Jews of today, what the Jews did to Muhammad in Khaybar. When Muhammad conquered Khaybar, guys, the story goes like this. When Muhammad conquered Khaybar and he killed one of the leaders, Zainab, the daughter of, the, of, the, of one of the leaders, offered Muhammad to eat from a prepared meat, from a lamb meat, right? She, <laughs> she put poison in the, in the lamb meat and that poison was so strong that one of the Sahaba, when he ate, he put small amount of food, he dropped immediately dead. And Muhammad only took a small part and he started to suffer for the last couple of years. He didn't eat as much as his uh, Sahabi, right? As his companions. But Muhammad became really, really, really sick. He, was so, he became so sick that he started to forbid alcohol. That is why Muhammad actually forbid alcohol in Arabia. Because he got jealous, seeing his Sahaba becoming drunk, drinking Nabid, and by the way, Nabid is wine in Arabic. He started to forbid Nabid in only the last three years. Why? Because he got jealous. He saw his fellow companions drinking wine while he could not because he was very sick, right? So till today, Muslims on the streets say, Khaybar Khaybar Ya Yahud O Jews remember what happened in Khaybar 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 Ya Yahud the army of Muhammad will return now I looked for a video to show you that I'm not lying that it's still actually happening now listen carefully guys
Did you catch it? Khaybar Khaybar Ya Yahud Jayshu Muhammad Sofa Ya'ud Right? So they are still reminding the Jews how they poisoned Muhammad how they got rid of Muhammad Right? These are Sunni Muslims The Shia will say no Hafza and Aisha did it Right? Hafza and Aisha did it to give the power to Abu Bakr, the father of Aisha so this is why Shia curse Aisha, they curse Hafza, they curse Omar, they cur curse Abu Bakr, and they call Sunnis Bakris, right? They call Sunnis Bakris. Now if we go to the Bible, guys, if we go to the Bible, yeah, uh, I want to welcome everyone who just joined in. Guys, you didn't mu miss much. Uh, we just started basically. Uh, if we go to the Bible, guys, and we go to Deuteronomy 18, 18 to 20 from the King James Version. Now, Muslims love to talk about Deuteronomy 18, 18, but they don't want to read, continue reading to the two next verses. And here's why, guys. Here's why. Verse 18, read with me. I will raise them a prophet from among their brethren. Who? From the Israelites, right? Now, last time I checked, Muhammad is not an Israelite. So I have no clue why Muslims are trying to force Muhammad in this verse of the Bible. They have no shame, they have no dignity, so they have to play with our verses. Right? So they are trying to force Muhammad in this. This is talking about a prophet that will be raised from the Israelites. From the blood of I Isaac, right? Because God made the covenant with Isaac when he was talking about with Abraham. He said, my covenant will be with Isaac, remember? Right? In Genesis. Not with Ishmael. Ishmael was kicked out together with his mother Hagar. So... Here, God is saying, I will raise a prophet from the Israelite, from the blood of Isaac, from the blood of Jacob, right? Like unto thee, and I will, and will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. So, this prophet that will come from the Israelites, did you catch it? Are you with me, guys? Did you catch it? So, God will put his word in his mouth and he and this prophet will do as God commands him to do now question question to the audience did Muhammad speak of Jehovah our holy living God certainly not he came with a totally different God he came with Allah the Israelites have never heard of Allah who is Allah right Jehovah is the father of mankind. Allah is a father to no one. Totally different God. Right? Totally different God. And if we continue reading, and it shall come to pass that whoever, whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, in whose name? In Jehovah's name, not Allah. Totally different God. And I will require it of him. In whose name? In Jehovah's name. So that prophet must in all times speak of Jehovah's name. I am that I am. When Moses asked God, can you tell me who I shall tell them who sent me? He said, I am. Tell them that the I am sent you. So our God, guys, take notes. God of the Holy Bible is not bound to any name. Our God does not need a name. So God of the Bible says to Moses, tell them the I am send you. You see, our God does not need a name like Allah. Allah is limited. This is why he's called Allah. Our God is not limited, not bound, has no limitation. He can do whatever he wants. He can enter the flesh if he wants. God bless you, Peter. God bless everyone who just joined in. Kenosis, Cruiser, Andrew Martin, Jason, everyone who just joined. God bless you, Naomi. 
Sorry if I forgot to mention any name. God bless our admins who are doing an amazing job. <clears throat> so if we continue to verse 20, this is very, very important verse. Muslims don't like to read this verse. They only stop here, right? They stop here. Why? Because here is why. Verse 20 from Deuteronomy 18, verse 20, but the prophet, the same prophet, right? That will be raised, but the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. So meaning, meaning, if, if Muhammad lived in the time of Moses, Moses would have ordered his man to go and stone Muhammad to death. Pick up stones and throw stones at Muhammad, the false prophet, because he spoke of a different God, Allah, and his three bird idols, daughters, Allah, Tal Uzza, Wal Manat. Remember? When Muhammad gave the satanic verses, these are the satanic verses. These are the mighty high cranes. Their intercession is hoped for. So Muhammad gave this satanic verses to the pagans of Mecca, the Quraysh pagans, right? So this prophet, Muslims, Muslims, if you want to have a cake, you want to eat it too? So you want to have a cake and eat it too, Muslims? You want to talk about a verse, misquote a verse out of context, and you don't want to continue reading? I wonder why. Why? Because you love to deceive people, right? Guys, this is why we always say, you always need to read an entire chapter to understand the context. Never ever trust a Muslim with one verse from the Bible. Always force him to read the chapter, the entire chapter to understand. Because they will add stuff to our Holy Bible. And always make sure to go check, double check, triple check the verse that they are giving you. Read a couple verses before, read a couple verses after to understand. Are they trying to deceive you? And nine out of 10 times, they will try to deceive you. Sometimes even 10 times out of 10 times, they will try to deceive you. Right? Right? So that prophet shall die. So Muhammad would have been stoned to death in the time of Moses. Moses would have ordered his men to pick up stones and throw them at Muhammad. Because Muhammad was a fake prophet. That prophet shall die. And if we go to the Quran, chapter 69. Now pay attention guys. This is a very important chapter. Now here is why. Take notes please. Help me to help you use them in your debates with Muslims. When they love to talk about how important Muhammad is for them, right? They say, he's the final prophet, he's the last prophet, he's the seal of all the prophets. Right? Now read with me, chapter 69, chapter 69, ayahs 44 to 46. وَلَوْ تَقَوَّلَ عَلَيْنَا بَعْدَ الْأَقَاوِيلِ لَأَخَدْنَا مِنْهُ بِالْيَمِينِ ثم لقطعنا منه الوتين. So Allah is saying, and if he, Muhammad, had invented false sayings concerning us, concerning who? Allah. So if Muhammad invented ayahs, right? Invented ayahs concerning Allah, Allah will take him by the right hand and then sever his live artery, which is the aorta, the live aorta. His aorta will be cut off by Allah himself. Did you catch it? 
So, let's see, guys. Let's see. Let's see. If this actually happened to Muhammad. Did Allah cut off his aorta? Now take notes, guys. Remember this. Did Allah cut off his aorta? This is <clears throat> sunnah.com. Sunnah Nabi Daud from the six authentic hadith collection of books, right? Muslims can't say this is to be rejected. No, this is authentic. The Messenger of Allah would accept a present but would not accept alms, sadaqa, right? He would not accept sadaqa, which is a lie, but he, he did. Anyway, and Wa bin Baqiyah narrated to us elsewhere from Khalid, from Muhammad ibn Amr, said on the authority of Abu Salama, and he did not mention the name of Abu Huraira, the Messenger of Allah used to accept presents, but not alms. This version has, so a Jewish, now, I have a question for you before I continue, guys. The story goes like this, right? When Muhammad conquered Khaybar, he killed all, all the men, right? He called all the men and he took women as sex slave and whatnot. So there was a, a Jewish lady by the name of Zainab. This is not, by the way, not the same uh, lady, Zainab bint Jahsh, who Muhammad took as one of his wives. Zainab bint Jahsh is his daughter-in-law that he had sex with. He took Zainab bin Tijash from his son Zayd bin Muhammad, right? This is a different Zainab. So this Zainab, guys, Muhammad, when he went and conquered Khaybar, and remember, we played for you the video, when Muslims go on the street, say, they say, Khaybar, Khaybar, Ya Yahud, Jaysha Muhammad, Sufi out, right? They are reminding the Jews, the Israelites, how they poisoned Muhammad, right? Those are the Sunnis. Remember, those are the Sunni Muslims. So Zainab, her father was killed by Muhammad. Her uncles were killed by, her brothers were killed by Muhammad. Now, question, Muslim people, Christian. If I call myself a prophet and, I, and you are a woman, I kill, your, I kill your father, I kill your brothers, I kill your uncles, would you accept would you accept me as woman after you killed my family? Would you accept my food that I prepare for you as a prophet while you killed my, 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 my family? Would you do that? Would you do that, people? Would you accept me making food for you, delicious food? Huh? Nope. Su Su saying nope. Why not? Because maybe I will poison you. Because you killed my family. Right? So look how stupid Muhammad is. He killed her father. Right? He killed her father. This Jewish lady. He killed her father. But he wants to eat from her hands. That's stupid. Why would you do that? So what did this lady do? She put poison in the mean that she prepared for Muhammad. What a stupid prophet Muslims have. So a Jewish presented him at Khaybar with a roasted sheep, which she had poisoned. Did you catch it? So this Jewish Zainab, Zainab bint al-Harith, right? Zainab bint al-Harith, she put poison in this roasted sheep and she gave it to Muhammad. Now the Messenger of Allah, Muhammad, Allah praying on him, Allah still praying on Muhammad, to who we don't know, but anyway, Muhammad ate of it and the people also ate. He then said, take away your hands from the foot, for it has informed me, so this, Muhammad can talk to a dead sheep, remember this is a special, special prophet, he can't talk directly to Allah, he needs a middleman, Jibreel, the demon Jibreel, but he can't to talk to roasted sheep. I think Muhammad, guys, was Dr. Doolittle of his lifetime. But Dr. Doolittle, he used to talk to living animals. Muhammad is talking to dead animals that are 
very deliciously prepared with a little poison on the side right so Muhammad is saying the food the roasted sheep informed me that it is poisoned I mean Muhammad why would you accept food from a lady a Jewish lady your enemy while you killed her, her father you killed her uncles her brothers and whatnot why would you do that are you stupid of course she's going to poison you no bells are ringing for Muhammad alarm bells this lady is coming with a delicious food don't you think she might poison you for killing her family what a stupid guy man <clears throat> Bishr, there's a, a one of the Sahabi guys, one of the companions, Bishr ibn al-Bara ibn Ma'arur al-Ansari died. He immediately died when he took that food, right? He ate a lot of food, he ate a lot of the lamb, the prepared lamb, the sheep, and he died immediately, he dropped dead. But Muhammad ate only a small amount, right? So he... Muhammad sent for the Jewish Zainab, Zainab bint al-Harith, and said to her, what motivated you to do the work you have done? Why did you do it? I mean, Muhammad, are you this stupid to ask her this question? Are you so stupid to ask her this question? You killed her father, al-Harith. You killed her father. You killed her uncles, her brothers, her whole tribe, and you took the women and the daughters of this tribe as sex slaves and you are asking her why she did that what a stupid abdul this muhammad is you must be really stupid to ask this question but you know what can we do this is the stupid abdul prophet of islam so she said zainab the jewish lady who poisoned muhammad said if you were a prophet it would not harm you but if you were a king I should read, read the people of you. Did you catch what she just said? Did you catch what she just said? Are you with me guys? So she's saying if you are truly a prophet, not a fake prophet, it will not harm you. So let's see guys if the poison actually did harm Muhammad to make sure that he's a fake prophet. So here she's putting him on a test to see if this guy is nothing but a fake prophet. But if you are a king, I should read the people of you because Muhammad destroyed a complete tribe. He killed a father. I mean, Muhammad was all about conquering. He's, he was nothing but a warlord. Right? He was nothing but a warlord. And Muhammad said, remember yesterday what I said? Muhammad is commanded to fight everyone till they accept Islam. And accept him as the prophet, right? So the messenger of Allah, Allah is praying on him, still praying, then ordered regarding her and she was killed. So Muhammad was not merciful. He immediately killed her. I mean, of course this woman wants to take revenge. You just killed her whole tribe, her father, her uncles, her brothers. And you took the women as sex slaves. Of course she wants to get rid of you. As if you would not have done that, guys. Anyway, he then said about the pain of which he died. Now here, he failed the test, right? He failed the test. Watch. I continued. So Muhammad is saying, pay attention, guys. I continued to feel the pain from the morsel, from the sheep that he ate from, which I had eaten at Khaybar. This is the time when it has cut off my aorta. Boom! Muhammad failed the test of being a prophet. Did you catch it? And what did Allah say? Thumma laqata'na minhu al-watin. That means the life artery, the, author, the aorta. So who killed Muhammad? Allah killed Muhammad. And Muhammad failed the test. Right? His aorta was cut off. He just confirmed, Muhammad confirmed. This is not my words, guys. This is Muhammad speaking. Muhammad is aorta was cut off. So, let us sum it up, guys. Let us sum it up. Okay? Muhammad attacks Khaybar. 
he conquers Khaybar, he kills all the men, he kills the father of Zainab bint al-Harith, he, he kills her father, al-Harith, he kills her uncles, he kills her cousins, her nephews, all the men, he takes the women as sex slaves, and he's so stupid to accept the roasted sheep from Zainab bint al-Harith, this Jewish lady. So it was a Jewish tribe, a tribe from Khaybar, and then he eats the poisoned prepared meat, and then when he eats, he says, this is the time when it has cut off my aorta. And if we go to the Quran, Allah is the one, according to the Quran, who cut off the aorta, the life artery of Muhammad. And if he had invented false saying concerning us, we assuredly had taken him by the right hand and then severed his aorta, his life artery. Muhammad failed the test. He is a fake prophet. And if we go to different hadith, let's say that hadith is fake. Again, it is mentioned in this hadith. Sahih in chain. Sahih, Sahih, Sahih. Right? Always with an echo. Sahih, Sahih. Sunan Abi Dawud. Hadith number 4513. Again, it is mentioned saying, This is the time when it cut off my aorta. From a different hadith. This is hadith number one. Hadith number two. Where his aorta beans cut off. And. This is. Also from a different hadith. Also Hassan. This is one is good. Great good. Hadith number 4512. Saying. This is the time. What it has cut off my aorta. Again. Muhammad confirming this. Three hadiths, we already confirmed it, right? From the mouth of Muhammad. And if all those hadiths are fake, let us go to Sahih al-Bukhari. Sahih, Sahih, Sahih. This is Sahih al-Bukhari himself. Hadith number 4428. Muhammad saying, narrated Aisha. Narrated Aisha saying, the Prophet in his ailment, in his illness, in which he died, used to say, O oh Aisha, I still feel the pain caused by the food I ate at Khaybar, that same tribe that he attacked and conquered, killed all the men, where he got poisoned by Zainab bint al-Harith. And at this time, I feel my aorta is being cut off from the poison. And this is a false translation, guys. Look how Muslims are in need to falsify the translation, make a false translation, because that's not what the Arabic says. Wajattu, it says Wajattu, anqata abhari min dhalik al sam. So my aorta, I saw, I noticed, I feel that my aorta is caught from that poison. So here they have to add as if. You see how they are deceiving as if? No, no, no. It says, I feel my aorta is being cut from that poison. And like the other hadith, right? Here they forgot to falsify the translation. Did you catch it? So in, in Sahih al-Bukhari, they did put false translation. Filthy dece deceivers and liars. Did you catch the deception, guys? The Arabic, the original Arabic of the Hadith, doesn't say that as if. It says, Wajattu, I saw or I feel, and Qata, it is caught, Abhari, my aorta, another word for libertary. I feel, I saw that my aorta is cut off, min, from that poison, ذلك السم. That poison. So there is nothing called as if, guys, in the Arabic. So why you Muslims, why you, do you have to deceive non-Arabic speaking Christians or Muslims? So who did actually kill Muhammad? According to the Quran, it must be Allah. We can make that final conclusion, right? Right? 
So they have to falsify the translation. Yeah, Muslims need, you know, cruiser, cruise, crusader, I, sorry if I'm butchering your name, cruise 8R. Muslims have to change the topic because they don't like these topics. They don't like to talk about the truth, right? That's how Muslims are. They don't care. Right? So Allah is the one who got rid of Muhammad. Right? Allah is the one who seized Muhammad by the right hand and cut off his aorta. And then severed his life artery. Did you catch it? Guys, please take notes. Help me to help you. Use this information when you debate Muslims. Take notes. Note those chapters and ayahs down. Right? Let me give you also... <clears throat> Sorry, this one is better. This one is at least Sahih. Let me give you the links, guys. This is from Sahih al-Bukhari. Make sure to know that there's nothing called as if in the Arabic, okay? This is the link from Sahih al-Bukhari. Because the Arabic doesn't say as if, right? So be sure to remove this from your notification or from your notepad if you are writing stuff down. There's nothing as if in the Arabic text. Right? You're welcome, uh, Kenosis. We are not doing this for ourselves. We are doing this for you, help me to help you to expose this filthy satanic code and this false prophet. Right? Right? And why did Allah actually say, guys, why did Allah actually say that he will cut off the live artery, the, the aorta of Muhammad? Because if Muhammad said something against Allah, he will cut off his aorta. Why did Allah say that? Well, if Muhammad is a false prophet, he will not say anything against Allah, right? Let us see if Muhammad actually did say something against Allah. If we go to chapter 22, ayah 52, the tafsir of this chapter 22, ayah 52, Asbab al-Nazul, by al-Wahidi, tafsir, very highly respected tafsir. Thank you for the donation, Jason Palmer. God bless you and your family. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. So if we go to the tafsir, chapter 22, ayah 52, it says, The devil put on his tongue. On whose tongue? On Muhammad's tongue. He delivered the satanic verses to the pagan Quraysh. The devil put on his tongue what he had secretly wished and hoped for and said, now this part, guys, is the satanic verse. When you ask yourself, what are actually the satanic verses? This part is the satanic verse. First, let me say it in the Arabic. تِلْكَ الْغَرَانِيقَ الْعُلَىٰ إِنَّ شَفَاعَتَهُنَّ لَتُرْتَجَىٰ These are the high mighty cranes, the gharaniq, and their intercession is hopeful. So this part was in the Quran, right? This part was in the Quran, right? And Jibreel came to spank Muhammad and correct Muhammad. Oh, oh, Muhammad, what have you done? So when the Quraysh, when the Quraysh got the satanic verses from Muhammad, when the Quraysh heard this, they were very pleased with Muhammad. Did you catch it? The Quraysh are the pagan Quraysh of Mecca, right? The pagan tribe of Mecca, the number one Quraysh tribe. Right? And what did Muhammad do? He carried on reciting until the end of the surah and then did sujood. He prostrated to the bird idols of the pagans. Allah al uzza wal manad. The third, the other, right? So Muhammad prostrated, an act of worship. He bowed down and pr did prostration. And all the Muslims, all the Muslims who were there, followed Muhammad, you know, copy paste doing what Muhammad is doing, prostrating in front of the idols of the pagans, 
to the Allat al-Uzza wal Manat, and all the pagans who were present prostrated to. I mean, if you are a pagan, you will not prostrate if it's not to the idols, right? So Muhammad and all the Muslims and all the pagans bowed down and prostrated in front of the bird idols. So here we can conclude this is the reason why Muhammad was killed by Allah himself. So here Allah cut off the life artery, the aorta of Muhammad because Muhammad delivered the satanic verses that he got from Satan himself, right? The Satan put it on his tongue. Now question, why did Muhammad was not protected by Allah? Why Allah did not protect Muhammad? If, so, if he is the final prophet, oh boy, oh boy. Where is Christian prince who always say, oof, oof, oof. Where is Christian prince when you need him? <laughs> oof, oof, oof. Right? So who got rid of Muhammad? Allah killed Muhammad by cutting off his aorta. Did you catch it guys? Oof, oof, oof. Yeah. Now guys, now I want to play a small video for you. from Sheikh Yasser al-Habib, he is an infamous Shia Sheikh from London, highly respected among the Shia Muslims, look what he's saying. The truth is that the Prophet was poisoned in his last days before he died. Aisha and Hafsa administered poison in his food. Upon hearing this, the Imam Sadiq's followers said that they and their fathers were among the worst villains ever created by Allah. Al-Ayashi relates another hadith attributed to Imam al-Sadiq, peace be upon him, in which he says, al Hussein ibn al-Mundir asked Imam al-Sadiq about Allah's words, if then he died or is killed, will you turn back upon your heels? Does it mean that the Prophet died a natural death or was murdered? Imam al-Sadiq said in this verse, Allah refers to the Prophet's companions who committed the misdeed. These hadiths confirm beyond doubt that the Supreme Prophet, peace be upon him and his pure family, was killed by poison administered in his last days and was not allegedly given four years prior to his death. They also confirm that the crime was an act of treachery by his two wives and their fathers. Did you catch it guys? Did you catch it? Thank you for your donations. God bless you my friends. We appreciated your donations and your support. God bless. So did you catch what happened? According to the Shia, like I said before, the Shia claim that Muhammad was poisoned. It's an act of treachery from Hafsa and Aisha administered by Abu Bakr and Omar so that Abu Bakr can take the control from Muhammad. So it was nothing but an act of treason by his two wives, Hafsa and Aisha. Right? They were putting poison giving poison to Muhammad in secret. Yeah. So the Shia say, the Shia say, Aisha and Hafza killed Muhammad. It's an act of treason. So he was killed by his two wives. Right. This is why Aisha is 
always cursed. This is why Hafsa is always cursed by Shia. I like this guy. He's a Shia Imam, right? Highly respected Shia Imam in London. You heard him, right? I mean, you heard him. Right? Motive, they wanted to give the power to Abu Bakr. So it was an inside job, guys, like the mafia, an inside job. So that Abu Bakr can take the control, the power from Muhammad. They wanted to get rid of Muhammad. Did you catch it? This is what the Shia say. The Sunnis say, no, no, the Jews killed our Prophet. Zainab bint al-Harith, as we said, the Jewish lady poisoned Muhammad. That's what the Jews say. This is why they always go on the street, right? Khaybar, Khaybar, Ya Yahud. They are reminding them how they killed Muhammad in Khaybar. Right? But we found actually the conclusion from the mouth of Muhammad. They are both lying. It's Allah himself who made that happen. Allah is the one causing Muhammad to die. Right? Because Muhammad gave the satanic verses to the pagan Quraysh of Mecca. And the proof is in front of you. Muslims, Muslims, wake up, drop Muhammad, drop Islam, get rid of Islam, stay out of Islam, leave Islam, come back to Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. Question, if Muhammad was truly a prophet, should Allah not have protected him from Satan, who was controlling Muhammad? Riding Muhammad like a donkey, I kid you not. You know, remember the, the black magic that was cast on Muhammad? Why did Allah forgot to protect Muhammad from the black magic? Muhammad was ridden by Satan like a donkey. Muh Satan was riding Muhammad like a donkey for at least six months when Muhammad was under the black magic spell of Satan. Satan himself, always Satan. Allah cannot command Satan to behave. Satan is so powerful in Islam, guys. Riding him like a donkey, controlling Muhammad for at least six months. Other sources say even one year. Black magic on Muhammad from Satan. He riding him like a donkey. Yeah, like a cowboy. Satan was like a cowboy. Allah was on vacation. You think so, Sila? Sila Luma, you think Allah was on vacation? I think uh, Allah was in the Bahis, right? In the, he went to the Bahamas, to the Bahis. Allah was having a nice, uh, was having a nice drink on the beaches of uh, the Bahis, the Bahamas, right? Take beer, Allah, take beer. Have a nice beer. I hope it was a cold served beer, right? You know, beer is delicious when it's very cold, right? So Satan was riding Muhammad and Allah was on vacation. He took his suitcase, he was tired of the book rap of Muhammad, and he went to the Bahis, to the Bahamas, to enjoy himself. Enjoy the take beer. Single malt. <laughs> Since we have three dislikes, guys, let me open up my Skype so we'll see if Muslims will call in and defend their prophet. My Skype is open, guys. If there is any Muslim, if there is any Muslim who has the courage and the knowledge to refute today's topic, be my guest. The line is open. Call me and refute me. You know, Mimi Hijab always say, silence me. End my career. Silence me. Well, go ahead, Muslims. You have to defend your fake prophet, right? Any Muslim who has the courage or the knowledge, please be my guest and call me live. We are live. Any Muslim, 
Uh-oh. -uh. No Muslims? I think again we are out of Muslims. We have 1.4 billion Muslims. We always say Islam is the largest growing religion. Right. And there is no single Muslim who has the courage to call me. Where are the Ustas of Indonesia, Malaysia? Where are they? Where are the Al-Azhar Imams? Where are they? Right? You can defend Muhammad. Where is the Ustaz, 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 Ustaz? Where are the Imams, Imams, Imams? Did you like that, Kenosis? I did that specially for you. Don't worry. And I think Allah is still praying in the meantime. He's praying on Muhammad, to who we don't know. But I think Allah is still on vacation. And Allah is the one, according to the Quran, Allah is the one make me doing this exposing his fake prophet right Allah misguides who he likes well clearly Allah is the one who misguided Rob Christian or Christian Prince or David Wood or Sam Shamoon or other warriors who are exposing this filth this satanic cult and Allah is not doing anything about it uh, well Michel Fidi flies please he uh, I think he took a last minute trip to the Bahis, like I said, you know, to the Bahamas. I hope you will not catch that hurricane. It's an hurricane season right now, right? So I hope Allah will be, will be, will be okay, right? Maybe he will have some, at least some sun, getting a nice tan. Any Muslim? Why did Allah cut off the orta of your fake prophet Muslims? Um, Edho Radhita, sorry Rob, is she, he or she, sorry, I'm not sure if you're a male or a female. I'm not trying to insult you. He or she is asking, is Shia and Islam have any differences? I mean, you, the, are you asking basically if there are Sunni and Shia differences? Yes, of course. At all. The Shia say we are the true sect of Islam. The Sunni say no, no, we are the true sect. And Muhammad, remember, Muhammad said there are 73 sects in Islam and only one is the truth. But he failed, like always, he failed to say which one. Right? Which one is the true sect? He didn't know. He didn't say. So they are still guessing which sect is the true. Is it the Shia? Is it the Sunni? We don't know. Right? And there are thousands of sects in Islam, not one and not two. So Muhammad also lied. There are more than 73 sects. There are hundreds, there are thousands of sects in Islam. But some of them are so small you don't hear about them much. Right? Right? Many sects. Yeah, so basically, how did Shias and Sunni start, guys? Well, basically, here, here, how it started. You know, I, I mentioned this in my live show that was taken down by the devil advocate, YouTube himself. They didn't like that I was exposing Islam in that live show. I was mentioning that the Shia and the Sunni sect, they split... The moment the Muhammad died, you know, Muhammad died, and you know, it was all about power. You know, some Muslims wanted Ali to take command, other Muslims wanted Abu Bakr. Right? This is why the Shia are cursing Abu Bakr. Aisha, Hafza, they said it's an inside job. It was a Treachery, it was a treason, act of treason. They wanted to get rid of Muhammad before Ali could co take control, right? So the Shia follow Ali and his household. And they call them Ahlul Bayt, right? The family of the Prophet. They wanted Ali and his sons to take control. To be, the, Ali to be the first successor of Muhammad, the first Caliph, right? And this is why you see Shia and Sunni cursing each other left and right. This is why there is so much hate between the two 
largest sects of Islam. Sunni is the largest sect, then Shia are the second. Right? And then there are many other different sects. Right? Did you catch it? I hope I answered your question. Ultimate truth. If I'm blocking you, if I'm going to unblock you, ultimate truth, if I'm going to unblock you, will you defend your prophet? Or are you going to change the topic like a clown? Huh? Are you going to waste my time? Or are you going to defend your fake prophet and stay on topic? I'm not going to allow you or any Muslim to go off topic today. Yeah? Okay. Let's see what the majority of the people in the text. Shall we unblock him or shall we keep him blocked? What do you think, guys? Shall we keep the Satan worshiper blocked or unblocked? Ah, now, ultimate truth, I know you. You won't. You, you see, I will do. Okay, stay blocked. Stay in the dead body's grave of Muhammad. Keep, stay in Medina, you know. Last time I sent you to Medina to stay with the rotten body of Muhammad in Medina. We will keep following our holy living Jesus Christ. Even according to Islam, guys, Jesus is alive in heaven. But Muhammad is rotting in his grave in Medina. Why? Why is the most important prophet in Islam? Why is he rotting in Medina? In his grave? And why is Jesus still alive in heaven? Right? Since the people don't want me to unblock you, well, the majority can't. So, you will stay blocked because you cannot respect yourself you cannot stay on topic right and you are nothing but a troll you proved that last time i really want didn't want to block this guy guys you know i was like yeah hey, let me keep toying with this guy but you know when he started to insult jesus and his mother saying that jesus raped his own mother that was for me you know the final uh, he had to go that low he didn't do that before but he had to go that low he was so buttered you know, I was exposing his prophet so hard, saying that his prophet is nothing but a fake prophet, a gay bisexual prophet. You remember that uh, teaching, right? He got so hurt from me saying that because I proved it from their sources. He could not handle it, so he had to insult Jesus and his mother. So Muslims have to go low. You know, Muslims always say, guys, how many Muslims have you heard saying, we love Jesus, we love Isa, we respect Isa. Yeah, we, we see the respect for Mary, his mother, and him, right? We see your respect and love. You do not love other prophets except Muhammad. You liars, you filthy Satan worshippers. You filthy deceivers and liars. Yeah, Phil Herrera, God bless you, my friend. Pray for our admins, guys, who are doing an amazing job. Ramfer and others who are doing an amazing job posting links, helping us to help them. So he just posted the link, guys, of the bisexual. He loves to call him Molly. Phil, why are you calling Muhammad Molly, man? <laughs> no, he posted the link about the bisexual prophet of Islam. Guys, click on it. Bookmark it. Use it. All those sources that are on that link are very authentic sources. And do we have any Muslim who has the courage and the knowledge to call us live on Skype to defend their fake prophet except this ultimate shirk? Ultimate truth, didn't I tell you to change your name? Why are you still committing shirk? Why didn't you wash your mouth? Did evolution? Huh? Why didn't you do evolution? Change your nickname because you are using one of the 99 names of Allah. I mean, 
guys, guys, if I, I today, I change my name to Jesus Christ, how many people will have unsubscribed from my YouTube? Why are you using the name of Allah? Huh? Why do you have, I, I don't understand why Muslims still following this Abdul, this troll, he's trolling Allah. Why would you call yourself the truth? Because the truth is one of the 99 names of Allah, Al-Haq, right? Right? Imagine if I call myself Jesus Christ. That's what he's doing, guys. Well, you know, Muslims, they want to have a cake and eat it too. Right? They love to do shirk, commit blasphemy for the sake of Allah. This is nothing but a shirk satanic cult. Right? Yeah, Red Mouth, um, maybe uh, our brother Phil can help you out. Phil, can you look up uh, for a translation from Osama Dagdok? Actually, Osama Dagdok is a Christian who knows Arabic very well. He translated the Quran into his own personal translation so you can find it online it's somewhere i don't know i don't need that you know i know arabic i don't need a translation but you can find his translation somewhere online and you can use that till cp finishes his translation i'm sure phil has a nice link for you from osama dagdok Yeah, Osama Dagduk is a Christian apologist who translated the Quran. He, that translation is still not the best translation, guys, because I myself used to use that translation uh, on Paul Talk. We had a bot, right? A bot on Paul Talk when I used to stay in, on Paul Talk back in the old days. And that translation still had some problems. But, you know, it's better, at least it's better than Sahih International, Yusuf Ali translation and whatnot. Yeah, ultimate truth. I love you too, man. I love you too. Keep calling us deceivers, boy. Eh? Keep calling us uh, deceivers. But we know, you know, people know already. Who has the truth? Who is the truth? Jesus Christ is the truth, right? Jesus said, I am the truth, the way and life. So Jesus claims to be the truth, while Allah claims to be the truth too. So here, Allah is claiming divinity, right? He is the life bringer. I am the life. So if you don't accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you will not inherit eternal life in his kingdom to come. Right. Any more questions, guys, that we can answer for you in a text? Uh, someone told me in Discord that he had a question, but it seems that he is not here or I missed his question. I don't know. Maybe he asked it during the, when I was teaching. Sorry for that. But I always say, guys, please hold your horses. Ask me questions when I'm done teaching. Don't forget that, guys, because I really can't do two things at the same time, right? Could you show Trinity in Quran, please? Well, sure, why not? Is that the most difficult question? <laughs> nah, just kidding, let's see. Let me try to get it for you. No problemo, my friend, no problemo. Right. Chapter four. <clears throat> Let me go to it. Chapter four. I uh, 171 maybe if uh, our brother Phil Horea 
maybe you can put it in uh, the live chat for people to use it let me go those are a lot of eyes in this chapter One seventy one. Let's see. Almost there. Okay. This is the Aya. This is the Aya, guys. Okay. Now pay attention. Are you with me, my friend? Are you with me? The one who asked the question. Are you with me? Give me a one if you're with me. Give me one if you're with me, my friend. I'm sure that you are listening. Can you give me one? Okay, great, great. Okay, great. So here, pay attention. O people of the scripture, those are the Jews and the Christians, right? Whenever you see in the Quran the people of the scripture, those are not the Muslims. The, the people of the scripture are the Jews and the Christian. Why? Because we had the scripture before Islam. This is why we are called the people of the scripture. Muhammad was called illiterate because he did not have the scripture of God. He is not actually illiterate, he was spiritually dead, spiritually illiterate. So Muhammad could write and read and we showed you in many other videos before this, right? I want, don't want to go off topic too much, but this is why Muhammad is called illiterate. Muhammad was a merchant, right? Working under Khadija. And he could write and read very well. But Muslims will lie and say, no, no, Muhammad was illiterate. That's not true. Muhammad even asked for pen and paper to write something down to his Sahaba. In Sahih al-Bukhari, right? In Sahih al-Bukhari, asking for pen and paper to write something down so that his companions will not go astray. So, O people of the scripture, do not exaggerate in your religion nor utter aught concerning Allah, save the truth. The Messiah, the Jesus, son of Mary, Jesus, son of Mary, was only a messenger. So, according to this ayah, take notes, Jesus is a messenger, right? Jesus is a messenger, and He's the eternal word of Allah, uncorrupted word of Allah, His word, Allah's word, Allah's messenger in the flesh, right? So, He's the eternal word, in the flesh, right? And he, his word, which he conveyed unto Mary, and a spirit from Allah. Did you catch it? So he's the spirit of Allah, coming from Allah, from, that existed already with Allah, right? Because when, you need to understand this guys, please, pay attention. When Allah blew inside the, uh, Mary's vagina, yes, that's correct, according to the Quran, Allah blew inside the vagina of Mary, right, like a balloon. He gave the spirit from him, who is Jesus, inside Mary's vagina. So he's the, he's the spirit of Allah, a yeah, filthy Quran, right? Allah needs to be very explicit in the Quran. So Allah was blowing, Mary, like she is a balloon, inside her vagina, fi farjiha, fi farjiha means vagina, farj means vagina. Look how filthy Muhammad is in his Quran, guys. We know it's Muhammad, there's nothing called Allah, right? Allah and Muhammad are the one and the same guy, fabricating eyes. So, did you catch it? Jesus is the messenger of the, in the flesh, the eternal word of Allah, and Allah's spirit. That's the Trinity right there. Right? Yeah, guys, please don't forget to smash the like button and also subscribe to our YouTube channel and also click on the notification bell to receive notifications when we go live or upload videos. All right? So I hope you caught it. Did you catch it? Did you catch the Trinity, guys? All right, all right. Yeah, Allah, yeah. I love to blow inside Mary's vagina. God forbid this filthy 
satanical, insulting the mother of our Lord. Disgusting. Yeah, take notes, people, take notes. This is important stuff. This is the Trinity right here. So he, again, guys, help me to help you. Jesus is the messenger of Allah. His eternal word that came into the flesh. So one, two, and the spirit of Allah that he blew inside the vagina of Mary. Fi farjiha. Right? Three. He's the spirit of Allah, his eternal word, and he's the messenger in the flesh. Right? Exactly, Sila Lumen. God bless you. Exactly. The messenger, the eternal word. Because when we ask Muslims, why do I say eternal word, guys? Because when we ask Muslims, is the word of Allah eternal, uncreated? They say yes. So, since Jesus is the word of Allah, that means he is eternal, he's uncreated, he's God, equal with Allah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any Muslim. Yeah. Any Muslim. Do we have any Muslim? Hmm? Any more questions, guys? Do we have any questions? Maybe we have a Christian brother who wants to call me. I mean, you know, I don't want to be uh, too harsh on my brothers and sisters in Christ, right? I like, you know, we have the truth, right, guys? We have the truth. So we rather have Muslims calling in. But since there are no Muslims, we are out of Muslims today. The line is open. If you want to call me, as a Christian, you can call me since we are out of Muslims. Since there are no Muslims who has the courage, they all became keyboard terrorists. I know a lot of Muslims are watching and we already have four dislikes. So there are at least, at least four Muslims who are watching. I hope they are learning something. All right. I, I always say, guys, I always say, we should create a time travel machine. So if we have a scientist among us, help me to help you create a time travel machine. Beat me up, Scotty. <laughs> Let us go back to Muhammad's time. Buy a lot of keyboards. Give those keyboards to Muhammad and his Sahaba. Take away those swords so they can become jihadi keyboard warriors. Why? Because now, 1400 years later, we have Muslims who are not defending Islam. They are only jihadi keyboard terrorists. Muslims of today became very soft. Like an egg, you know, when an egg is still raw, you know, be, be soft like, you know, like a raw egg, right? They are raw eggs. They are soft. Muslims of today's are soft. They are all heroes behind their keyboards. If you really can defend your prophet, call, end my career. Silence me. Right? Tell us why Allah is still, after 1400 years, why is Allah still praying on Muhammad? And when Allah prays, to who? Let's Allah pray. You heard me, Hijab, right? Allah is praying for Muhammad, not to Muhammad. Well, Allah is still praying. <laughs> he, th he thought he was really smart, right? Then he went to Ghana to hide because he knew he was busted by David Wood. He went to Ghana, Africa, to hide. And when he came back, he wanted to correct himself, right? He said, no, no, Allah praises Muhammad. But wait a second, Mimi Hijab. According to the Quran, all praise be to Allah. So how does Allah praises Muhammad? Well, he keeps all the praises for himself. To who? To Allah. 
So again, instead of correcting, he made it even more worse for Muhammad. Did you catch it? So Muhammad Hijab, when he came back, bad mouth. Well, bad mouth is calling me. Let's see if this is a Muslim. Hello. Hello. Welcome. Hello. Is that Rob? Yeah, this the is Christian. Yes, not Rob the Christian. This is Rob Christian. Hello. What's yeah, up? Rob the Christian. Yeah. Uh, hi. No, no, Rob Christian. Um, Rob Christian, not Rob the Christian. Well, you are Rob the Christian, you know. No, I'm Rob Christian. I'm not Rob the Christian. I'm Rob Christian. I don't. Okay. I, I don't call you other names, right? Your name is about bad mouth, so I call you bad mouth, right? <laughs> no, no, don't call me bad mouth. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, my name is Deep. I'm actually not a Muslim, but I just wanted to request you because uh, see, you're a Christian and you have a great uh, Christian following behind you. Okay. And uh, before you continue, my friend, uh, b thank yeah. you for joining. Uh, thank you for calling. Yeah, sure. What is your religion? What do you what What do you follow? I'm a Hindu. You're a Hindu. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. So uh, why I'm calling you is I, I normally don't call you and disturb you or Christian friends because I listen and what I do I forward uh, you know the videos to other people especially Muslims who need to have awareness which you are spreading and I really appreciate you know everything that you guys are doing but the Thank thing you. is what I was trying to say is that you're welcome the, the the thing that I was trying to say that along with exposing Islam uh, the way you're doing is actually the best way uh, you know, you're doing it the best way. And I really appreciate it. But along with that, you must also unite all other faiths together to fight against Islam. For example, Christians and uh, Hindus and Buddhists and uh, even Sikhs cannot have differences among, among themselves. You know, because what we are seeing here in, uh, in Pakistan, what is happening that the, the Muslims, what they're trying to do, they're trying to attract uh, Sikhs towards themselves. And, uh, you know, so that they just have another ally to fight against maybe Christians and Hindus. You know what I mean? Yeah. They cannot make, they, they cannot make Hindus as their allies. For sure they cannot. They cannot make Christians as their allies. So they're picking on small groups like, uh, like Jan. You know, Jan is, um, is actually an offshoot of Hinduism. So is basically my friend. Them. If I can, yeah. if, if I can uh, answer the thing is, my yeah, friend. Sure. The thing yeah. is, uh, we Christians, we don't, uh, we don't fight. We don't need to fight. We we don't go off on offense mode. I you know yeah. I I like to see all kind of people uh, exposing this satanic cult called Islam. You know, exactly. That's what we are doing right every week, almost every day. Yeah. Right. I'm yeah. doing that. Uh, people like Christian Prince, who is a wonderful dear brother of mine. Oh, yeah, Shamoon yeah. and David, a lot of people, right? I'm not the only sure. one, right? You have a guy yeah. called, an ex-Muslim guy called Apostate Prophet doing an amazing job. I you, know all of them. Uh, you have yeah, a lot I'm, of people, right? You have a lot yeah, of people. I'm, I'm, I'm but who, who are we? Only thing we can do, my friend. I, I'm, I don't have a political... Uh, uh, I'm not a political I authority. I, yeah, yeah. I, I don't like to talk about politics, right? Yeah, true. Uh, only yeah. thing I can do is yeah. expose Islam and from yeah. my from my point of view preach about my lord and savior jesus christ so True. you know but the thing is in christianity we don't yeah. need to force anyone to become a christian right we yeah. preach ab uh, our good news which is the gospel who is jesus christ himself yeah and invite people in a very peaceful way to come back to jesus christ and join us in Jesus Christ. But we can't force anyone. We are not Muslims. We don't put the sword of Muhammad like Muslims yeah. did for the last 1400 years. And we know oh, yeah. the bad fruit of, Muslim, of Islam and Muslims, right? Look at Syria, yeah. look at Iraq, yeah. look at Egypt. Uh, uh, Egypt was a I, Christian uh, country, uh, right? I don't, I, I don't need to go far you yeah. know, in my yeah. own country. We I know, a lot, I know, know, my friend. I know how much uh, uh, Hindus have suffered you know, I know all about the, the, the wars between Pakistan uh, and yeah. uh, India, how many Hindus have been killed 
by Muslims. Yeah. I think uh, at least 180 million Hindus have been killed, right? By oh, Muslims. I, at I least. don't know if there is a count. because yeah, It's terrible. Uh, I know. Yeah, it started long back, you know, and uh, in, in India, we, we fought Muslims very bravely because we have stories from uh, the past which shows us how we, you know, yeah. how we really kicked them, we defeated them so many times. I know, but the thing I is, know. it's it's in in our in our mythology, in our religion, we don't we don't uh, believe in aggression. No, you know, so we invite everyone. For example, the Jews, and yeah. there is a small small community which is known as the Parsis. They are actually the uh, you know the um, Iranians. They mm -hmm. settled in India a long time back, and they are still living here peacefully. Yeah. If you remember what happened in in uh, in Mumbai when uh, uh, you know some terrorists. They came from Pakistan. By yeah, the, I know, by the I know. Yeah. yeah. So one of their, uh, you know, one of their prime target was, uh, you know, a Jew community uh, where there were Parsis and Jews were living. So that was their target, which they hit the target. I mean, they couldn't do as much damage as they expected, but they did. You know, but no one ever disturbed those people in India, they were never harassed by the Christians, they were never har harassed by the Hindus. Yeah. Only the Muslims were the ones who were harassing them. So their settlement in India, in small places in, in uh, you know, Mumbai and close to Mumbai, is all which is surrounded by the Hindu or the Christian communities because they don't feel safe around Muslims. Yeah. So, you know, in the same way, a uh, lot of uh, Hindu communities if they have uh, a Muslim majority area na near them, they would prefer to go away from them, yeah. you know, and settle somewhere else. Yeah, my friend, and, yeah, my friend, yeah. Um, I understand you, but you know why Muslims are doing this. If you look, yeah. can you look at, do you see the screen? Yeah, I, I yeah. see the, This see is Muhammad, yeah. this is Muhammad, very, from very two trustful sources from Sahih Muslim and Sahih Al-Bukhari, which are the yeah. most authentic sources immediately after the Quran. Muhammad yeah, is true. saying, Muhammad is saying, from the yeah. mouth of Muhammad, I was yeah. commanded to fight people who, everyone on this world, until yeah. they testify that there is no God but Allah, and believe yeah. in me, and who in Muhammad, and what I've brought. When they do that, so when you yeah. become a Muslim, yeah. your blood, yeah. and your property, your women, your money, your daughters, are protected from me, except yeah. for a right they owe their reckoning is with Allah. So Muhammad, if you are a true Muslim, my friend, if you are yeah. a true Muslim and you are a Muhammadan, you are a Muslim, you have yeah. to fight in the name of Muhammad and Allah because exactly. you are you are to follow the commandments of Muhammad. So if Muhammad is commanded to fight everyone till they become Muslims, then yeah. every Muslim must do that. So it's normal for a Muslim who is a true Muslim, not this sugar sugar coated peaceful Muslims who claim to be Muslims, but a true Muslim are nothing but mm. ISIS, Al-Qaeda, exactly. right? So yeah, it's not, it's not uh, a really a shocking thing that we see a lot of Muslims who are true Muslims, not, do, not those mm. so-called Muslims here in the West or, or these internet jihadi keyboard Muslims and that we love to yeah. call them. Those are the well, true, I, Mus true Muslims, right? Even, even the other Muslims call them fake Muslims, yeah. you know, the ones yeah. You know, one, the ones who have uh, Christians or Hindus or uh, any other community as their friend. Yeah, those are uh, the fake Muslims, right? Yeah, the other yeah. Muslims call them fake Muslims. Yeah. You so, know? Yeah. so uh, Rob, one thing I wanted to say before, you know, because I'm not going to be very long because I want, I want yeah. you to continue what you're doing. Yes, uh, please, What I was friend. trying to say was, you know, the point of me calling you was that, uh, see, we have heard this a lot of times that in, in countries where there are... Uh, you know, brown people, I would say, people from India, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, uh, where, where there are brown people, a lot of brown people get attacked by uh, white Christians. They, they could be supremacists or, uh, you know, whatever they are. Well, but my friend, my friend, the, even I, I, we heard, we heard no, also, I, but we heard also I, stories from yeah. Hindu people who are killing Christians in India and Pakistan. So, you know, that's that not does, true. Well, that's not true. I, I, because we, we, I, I, you know, I don't I believe that. Here. Sorry. <laughs> you, <laughs> you know? know? Yeah. I'm, I'm telling you, when you say Hindus killing Christians, 
Yeah. That is next. That that is just the propaganda of of the fake news channels. It's it's nowhere. I have in my city, which is right in the north. Yeah. We have a church, which is a beautiful church. It's it's like gorgeous, yeah. and I think it is around 150 years old. This church, you know, and every Sunday you will see everyone going there. Yeah, my friend, uh, I need you know. Let us keep this short because there are a lot of people maybe who want to call me or you know we have to keep continue. Thank you for calling. But my friend, yeah, let I, me say I'm, one I'm thing. Gonna, yeah, I'm yeah, just you know, give you my message. Yeah, yeah I understand, bro. Message. Thank you for calling. But I, here's the thing: there's no one who will say my my yog yogurt or my cream is sour, right? So you yeah. know, we d we tend to differ, and it's okay. And what I want to say is Christianity, you know, the teaching of Christ is very straightforward love your okay. enemies don't go Rob, just, on just, offense just, right so just give me give me 30 seconds yeah 30 seconds all i'm trying to say is that uh this is a message through your channel to every christian out there all right every christian christian must realize that hindus are their friends and their allies sometimes hindus are being targeted i really Maybe hope so in, i really in, hope so you know? yeah we, we are in see this is a fight against Islam, where we all need to unite. So even the Christians, the Jews, the Hindus, the Sikhs, the Buddhists, they all have to get together to fight Islam because it's not that easy. Yeah. You my know, friend, you know, my friend. Christians yeah, alone cannot yeah, do that. Yeah, we have to be with you. And trust me, every Hindu on this planet or every Sikh or Jew or uh, even Jan or Buddhist, they want to be a part of this fight because yeah. everyone wants to get rid of Islam. Okay, so all I'm saying is to the Christians that before you start, uh, you know, going against someone, make sure that they are Muslim. Okay. They are not Hindus that, you okay, know, they my shouldn't friend. attack. Okay, my you friend. Know? Thank you for calling. Oh. God bless you. I hope uh, yeah, so God bless you, you will find Thank the you. truth Thank you for in your life. Me out. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> all See the you. best. All the best. Bye -bye. God bless you. Bye. Well, guys, uh, and also to the gentleman who just called, uh, the thing is, if we study the, carefully the Bible, especially the New Testament, the Gospel, uh, Jesus didn't tell us to go uh, pick up weapons and go and fight. We are fighting a sp spiritual fight, right? We, our fight is to share the truth, the Gospel. Share the truth about Jesus Christ. Share the gospel of Jesus Christ, right? The good teaching of Christ. Yeah. So, <clears throat> we love to expose Islam. And if you want to support us, be my guest, right? Be my guest. But you cannot expect from Christians to pick up swords, to pick up guns, and to go uh, fight Islam. That's not who we are. We are... If you call yourself a, a true follower of Christ, a Christian, we don't do offense. We are allowed to do self-defense. I mean, as a Christian, if, if a Muslim one day decides to come and kill me in my house, I will make sure, and this is the teaching of Christ, guys, I will make sure to kill him first. To kill him first before he hurts me or my family. So that self-defense is a Christian concept, but we are not allowed According to Christian teaching, according to Christ, we are not allowed to start the fight, right? So, our fight is a spiritual fight. We expose false teaching, right? So, if you want to support us in our work, I mean, be my guest. You're welcome to do that. Even if you're a Hindu or a Buddhist or whatever you are, right? And we like to share the gospel with everyone, right? We love to have you as a brother in Christ or sister in Christ, right? And we understand how much the Hindus have suffered, but the Hindus are not the only people who have suffered under Islam. I mean, uh, the, the gentleman wanted to talk and, you know, cast his heart out. I understand how much... Hindus have suffered. But what about the Egyptian Christians, the Coptic Christians? What about the Christians in Syria? What about the Christians in Iraq who lost their families, their people? How many people have suffered under Islam, right? Right? A lot of people have suffered 
from Islam. Right? Do we have any Muslim? Do you have any Muslim? Who has the courage or the knowledge to call me? My Skype ID is the Rob Christian. Thank you, Phil Horia. He just posted my Skype ID. Um, there's a gentleman. Please tell me your poll talk. I, I, I'm not on poll talk anymore, my friend. If you want to call me, you can call me on Skype. But I don't have poll talk anymore. I'm not on poll talk anymore. You can find me. You can still find my nickname on poll talk. Rob Christian. But I'm not on poll talk anymore. Okay. I only... Uh, I'm on YouTube. Sometimes I'm on Discord. But I'm not as much on Discord as I used to be. Since I do, started doing live shows. You can also find me on Discord as Rob Christian. Alright. Yeah. Like Draw Ranger saying, we don't want to go war with anyone. We don't want to hurt anyone. You know, our message of Christianity is love. Love your enemies. Pray for those who want to persecute you. Forgive the ones who want to hurt you. You know, remember the story of Stephen, the first Christian martyr, guys? Stephen, what a wonderful, sad, but wonderful story he has. Right? He was being stoned to death outside the walls of Jerusalem. What did he say? He didn't say, may God uh, curse them. No, he said, God forgive them. They don't know what they do. Right? What's a more powerful teaching than that? I love to die for my God. Yeah, since Stephen. He is the first Christian martyr. And basically all the apostles... Except John the Beloved, they all were martyred, right? Forget about Judas, but the rest of the apostles, they died. They believed. And because their faith was so strong, they loved to die for their faith in Christ, right? Those were eyewitnesses, guys. Those were eyewitnesses. They saw the miracles of Jesus. They saw Jesus ascending to heaven, right? They could heal people in the name of Christ. They did miracles in the name of Christ. What did Jesus say? Blessed are those who did not see, who were not witnesses. So we are blessed if we accept Jesus Christ, his ultimate sacrifice. We are the blessed ones if we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Because we did not see with our own eyes, but we believe. Right? Do we have any question? Yeah, Hillside uh, Judas, when he betrayed Jesus, he hanged himself. So he committed suicide. Yes. Who doesn't want to follow Jesus? Who doesn't want to follow the peaceful teaching of Christ? The wonderful teaching of Christ? Show me one teaching that is more wonderful than the teaching of Christ. What is more powerful than love your enemies? Pray for those who persecute you or want to hurt you. Please come back to Jesus. This is not only for the Muslims, guys. Also to the Hindus. To the Hindu brother who just called in. Please come back to Jesus. No one can save you except Jesus Christ. We are empty without the eternal word of God. Who became flesh for our sake. So we can be saved. So we can be reunited with our holy judge. With, our, with the holy father. 
We chose, guys, we chose to go against God. We chose to be disconnected from God. But God loved the world. He loved his creation. He sent his only son. The begotten son. Not from sexual intercourse like Muslim love to say. Love to corrupt the message. No. Monogeneous guys. You know ultimate shirk. That other day. He said. He said. That Jesus raped his mother. God forbid. This filthy satanic worshiper. Allah. Satan. He said Jesus raped his mother. No. The father. God the father. Did not have sex with Mary. Right. Monogenes. Which is the original Greek. You know. You need to understand. That the gospel. Was written in Greek. And begotten comes from the word monogeneous. Monogeneous means equal with the Father. Unique. Equal with the Father. Coming from the Father. It has nothing to do with sexual intercourse. There is no, one, there is no Christian who believes that Jesus was created. John 1.1 1, 1 says, In the beginning was God, and the Word was with God, so he, we are talking about the eternal word the word was with God and the word was God and verse 14 says and that same word became flesh and dwelled among us and glory to that word right right so that word is God himself that existed from the beginning already it's not created word you know and if you heard Ultimate Shirk, guys, if you heard him talk, right, he says the word is created. Now, wait a second, Abdul. Why are you exposing Allah? Right? Why are you exposing Allah? Because according to, the, to Islam, the word of Allah is uncreated. So he just attacked his own Allah. You filthy devil. You call yourself a Muslim, you are attacking Allah. You are attacking Islam because Islam teaches that the eternal word is uncreated. So how do you dare to say as a Muslim that the word of Allah is created? You filthy, lying, deceptive Muslim. You mushrik. You just call the word of Allah created, which is a lie. People, guys, Muslims were killed because they, some of them said that the speech of Allah, the word of Allah is created. They got killed. Those were the Mutazalites. Remember the Mutazalites, guys? My Skype is the Rob Christian. <clears throat> My uh, throat is starting to hurt because I'm talking for a long time now, so... If there is someone who wants to call me, make it quick. I want to end today's live broadcasting. I'm not uh, like CP, guys. <clears throat> oh, he hang up. Why? What happened? Let me call him back. Okay, something is going wrong. I'm not sure what's happening on his side. Oh well. Yeah, thank you, Andrew Martin. Yeah, I'm. I, I'm already. Uh, I have done four live shows, five live shows now. I can, I lost count this week. And you know, it's not really easy to talk two hours straight, right? But you know, we are not doing this for ourselves. We are doing this for the truth. And only the truth will prevail. So let, I hope this, this time it will work. Let's see. Hello. Hey, Rob Christian. Hey, welcome. Hello. God bless you. Hello. 
God bless you too. Uh, the first thing I want to tell you that uh, we love you very much, and you are one of the wonderfulest persons in the world. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you, man. You like this. <laughs> God, God bless you too. Uh, yes. Uh, so um, I'm uh, working with translations of some uh, videos of yours and Christian Prince. You can check out in my channel. Okay. As I wrote there, I'm translating to Russian. Okay. And I uh, like had some uh, problems with some Muslims. Yeah. Uh, with his translation. Okay. What? Like he 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 talk, uh, he like uh, I'm having like debate in my YouTube channel. Yeah. Yes. With some Muslims, and he he brought me some passages from Bible, and saying there are like uh, clear contradictions. Really. So I I wondered uh, maybe you could help with something like yeah. Well, my and friend, uh, the thing, yeah, was a bit confused also, yeah, yeah, the thing is, uh, that's not my today's topic, uh, and I really am about to close <laughs> my live show, you know, I really, my heart, my Maybe we throat, try with, uh, yeah, my with throat is Zach really killing me, <laughs> Zach and I, yeah, no, uh, you know, I hope you have called me before, and I really want to, uh, to close my today's <coughs> live show, okay, okay, maybe if you want to keep it for, they, yeah, yeah, yeah. They they just uh, blocked one of your videos, and I was listening to the other. I am always listening to you. We all are proud of you. Thank Wonderful you, my friend. Person. Thank you. Keep it in that way. Don't be angry. Don't be just sad. Everything is fine. Be glorified in Jesus Christ. Love you very much. Thank you, Thank my you friend. Thank you very much. God bless you. God bless you. Don't hesitate to call me another time. Okay. No problem. Uh, keep in touch. Uh, you are one of our projects. I'm going to translate your videos also. How All right, my friend. Uh, Thank you very much. Those, like <laughs> May God also bless you and your family and your work. The truth must go out, my friend. God bless you. Peace be with you, brother. Thank Love you, my you. friend. And peace with you. Peace of Christ. Peace. See you, my friend. Peace bye of bye. Christ. Right. Right. Bye bye. Hey yeah, guys, I really have to go. My throat. I can't <laughs> stay any longer. I no need to go get myself a drink, take a break. Uh, yesterday I did two live shows and today also now again. So sometimes, you know, we don't take care of our health, but we have, we have to do the Lord's work, right? It's never enough to do the Lord's work. Yeah, God bless the caller. I hope you'll stay in touch. Um, so now and then I will allow Christians to call in when we don't have Muslims, you know. I don't want to be a racist towards my uh, <clears throat> Christian brothers and sisters, right? But when we have Muslims, we have guests, right? We, love, we like to call them guests. They will get uh, in the front line, right? So thank you for watching, guys. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your donations. God bless you and your families. Today we talked about how Muhammad was killed by Allah himself. We also mentioned how the Shia claim that Muhammad was killed by Hafza and Aisha. It was an inside job. And we also mentioned the story of Zainab bint Al-Harith, the Jewish lady that Muhammad killed her whole tribe, her father, al harith her uncles, her brothers, her cousins, you know. And he was too stupid to notice that this woman wanted to get rid of him. And she put him on test and he failed that test, right? And he said, I feel that my aorta is being cut off. And who killed Muhammad? Allah killed Muhammad, right? Allah killed Muhammad. So guys, thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and smash the like button. Click on the notification bell, guys, to receive notification. Because, you know, YouTube sometimes is nothing but a devil advocate who is, likes to work against us. So, you know, help me to help you. Support our work. Subscribe. Always Make sure to click on the like button. Also click also on the notification bell. God bless everyone. We'll stay in touch. And Lord willing, we will see each other again in another live show.
God bless and thank you for watching. See you. Jesus is Lord and Islam is false.